Hey guys, I'm Allison, I'm the Pampered Wife. Today I have a Valentine's Day look for you. I'm gonna show you the whole look, how I put it together. Obviously, I've got more machin, mature skin. I'm 49 years old and I try to do a look that would be fitting for a 49 year old woman. Still looking maybe a little romantic, but not, nothing harsh. If you enjoyed this video at any point, please give it a thumbs up. Of course, I'd love to have you subscribe and leave a comment down below. It really helps out the algorithm of YouTube if you in any way engage with my channel. Everything I'll be using today will be listed in the description box down below. You don't at all need any of the products that I'm using. It's the idea of how I got this look that I hope inspires you to do something with the makeup that you already have. I'm gonna be inserting footage of me applying this look. It has been several hours later. I did a little touch up with some blush. I have different lips on now. Um, I do still have a cold, which is why this video is getting posted much later than I would like. I just was too sick to film sooner. But here it is. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in. So I wanted to start with a primer because I want my makeup to stay put. I want it to look really smooth and flawless on my face and a primer should help do that depending on the type of primer you choose. I'm not so crazy about the Beauty Pie All-In Wonder Illuminating Primer. I need to use it with some other products to see how I feel, but I thought about applying that one because I want a more luminous base. So instead I just went in with a stick highlighter, the Westman Atelier Lit Up Highlight Stick. I believe this is the shade Nectar. And this is just a nice emollient primer. It's gonna give my face a smooth, hydrated finish, which is what you want. It's just a hydrated face before you start applying makeup. That's basically primer in and of itself. It's also gonna give me some luminosity underneath my foundation. So if you're using a more matte foundation or something that has a more matte finish, this will definitely bring more life to your face. I just feel like on Valentine's Day, I wanted to be extra glowy. Around my nose was especially dry, so I want the product to, or the foundation to lay nicely on my nose, so I applied a little bit extra there, and then just kind of made sure it was all around my face, smoothed out. I did not apply it under my eyes because I do not like to illuminate under my eyes. Some people have a shaped face that that looks beautiful. For me, when I'm highlighted under my eyes or at all luminous or at all have any luminosity there, it just makes me look more tired. I decided to go in with concealer before foundation. I just like the way that looks better sometimes. I can always add more concealer on top and I decided to use a more full coverage concealer. Again, my face is well hydrated. My under eyes, I already put on an under eye moisturizer, so I used the Fit Glow Concealer today in the shade C3. This is a product I really like. It has a lot of skincare benefits. If my eyes aren't well moisturized, it can look textured under my eyes, but like I said, I'm well moisturized. I just applied it in all the places that I would want to brighten my face, cover dark spots, and that's really it. I didn't use it for any spot concealing, so I applied it where I'm dark at the inner corner of my eyes, just underneath the inner corner of my eyes, around my nose, my upper lip, because I've been blowing my nose a lot, it was all red. And then I like to brighten the center of my face just to keep that whole area brighter, so up through the center of my forehead and down on my chin. I did put a little bit out on the outer corners of my eyes. You don't want to put concealer too close to underneath your eyes, that's where you have, or I have definite lines and any concealer is gonna settle into there. So just keep that in mind. I tried to keep it away from directly under, you know, close to my waterline or anything because I don't want to, <clears throat> excuse me, create creasing. I love this brush. This is the Angie Hot and Flashy brush from BK Beauty. It is the A506 and it's just perfect for concealer. It has the kitten paw shape and that's great for patting in the concealer. And then the back side is bristles, which is great for spreading. I typically more pat in the concealer and then maybe spread the edges so that I keep the coverage. For foundation, I've chosen one 
that has a beautiful finish. It's the Tower 28 Sunny Days Broad Spectrum SPF 30 Tinted Sunscreen, but it really is a foundation more than a sunscreen. It has, of course, skincare benefits. It's vegan, cruelty-free, all of that. It's also approved by the Eczema Society, the only one that I know of, or Association, Eczema Association. Unfortunately, I have to use two shades. I have the shade Melrose and Ocean Park. Hopefully you can find a shade that works for you. I know they've expanded, or I believe they've expanded their shade range some, but I bought these a while ago when they were first released, so I just mixed the two on my fingers, and I use my hands to spread this around. I find using my hands is really the best way to apply almost any foundation. I spread it around, make sure to take it down my neck so I don't have any harsh lines. I also make sure to spread it into my hairline, back onto my ears. You just want a, a an all over finish. You don't want any harsh lines. And then since it has sunscreen, I put it on the back of my hands. I love the finish of this. Even without a luminous primer, it does have a luminous finish. I don't find it wet dewy looking. I've seen some reviews that people find it too dewy, but it's not for me. I have dry skin. I live in a dry climate. And of course, as I've matured, my skin has become more dry. So I love the finish. I love how it looks. You can absolutely still see my sunspots, my melasma. You know, it definitely looks like a not caked on with foundation, even though I did put quite a bit. I love that this foundation has SPF, but had I not used this, I just would have put SPF on underneath my foundation. As I mentioned, I do not like to be luminous underneath my eyes. I really feel like that makes me look sick. And then I also don't want luminosity in other places. I don't want to look like I'm having a hot flash. So I love my Say Beauty translucent setting powder. It has an absolutely beautiful skin-like finish. It's not at all drying. It just takes away a bit of the shine. It blurs the skin. And instead of a brush, I've been enjoying using a powder puff. This is one that came with my RMS powder that I bought eons ago. And I'm just, I, you know, patted it into the say powder, made sure it was really well dispersed on the sponge, and then tapped off on my face the areas where I wanted it, under my eyes, around my nose, because I'll be blowing my nose, I know that I will, the center of my chin, because I feel like I can look, if that remains dewy, it just looks like I'm sweating or drooling, and then also the center of my forehead, because I really want to add the shine elsewhere, and don't want those spots to be the main point of focus for shine. At this point, I'm going in with some brow gel. I don't feel that I need to draw in my brows. If they were more sparse, of course I would. I love the PYT brow pencil. I really like the Mineral Fusion brow pencil. This is a place that I just don't feel like you need to spend a lot of money. I recently purchased the Beauty Pie brow gel in the shade Medium Brown, I believe, or Neutral Brown. I'm loving it. It is the type of formula that I really like. It is a waxier formula that deposits color, but it's not too wet. I start by brushing my brows down, especially where they're sparse, because I want my brows to look lifted, so I don't want most of the color on the bottom of my eyebrow that will close in my eyes. I want most of the color lifting, and I want my brows to look thicker and fluffier, so I brush my brows down, and then I brush them up, putting more pressure at the base of my brow so that I don't draw pigment on my eyebrows above my eyebrows because then I'll just have to wipe that off up here and that can look messy. I hope that made sense. I really do recommend the Beauty Pie Brow Gel because it just, it doesn't deposit too much product. It gives a nice hold, but it does dry down. Excuse me, I just had a sneeze in there. Uh, it does dry down and it will hold my uh, brows in place although not perfectly. Um, I think compared to the video, my brows have definitely fallen a little bit. My hair has pushed them down some. I've been out and about. It's been about four hours since I applied this look, and now I'm filming the talking part. Definitely think brows are an important part of the look. They really make us look more youthful. They frame the eyes. Now I'm gonna go in with some Brontour. This is the OG Sculpting Stick in the shade Copper. I'm really enjoying this. I love this shade for both bronzing and contouring. Typically, I don't feel like you can use the same product for that, 
but uh, this is a really nice stick formula. It's not as soft and emollient as the highlighter from Westman Atelier, so it will stay put a little bit better and is easier to control. I'm drawing it just under my cheekbone and then taking it around sort of like a skeleton skull would look to just give my face more shape. I'm also trying to lift my face so I'm drawing lines up around my eyes, create a jawline so I'm putting the color just under my chin. Also to make my bottom lip look a little fuller, I drew a little bit under there. The second side I'm doing is actually quite a bit more round than the first side, so this is a little bit challenging for me to try to make them look even. Then I go through and just tap out the contour bronzer. I want to keep it in place. I don't want to spread it too much. I want it to stay where it is. I did end up putting a little bit around my nose just to make the tip look a little more narrow. Some people contour their nose, some people don't. I I'm not an expert in this, <laughs> but this is what I do. So mostly I'm just tapping it in. I do spread it a little bit under my chin. You wanna take it, if anywhere, down the sides of your neck, not down the center, because if you think about where the sun would hit you, you would not get very much sun just below your chin, down your neck, um, because your face would create a shadow there. So there's the difference between the two sides, one blended, one not, and now I'm just going in, tapping in the other side, trying to make them look equal. I do feel like this is a step that I've started doing more and more often. As I've gotten older, I feel like my face has fallen, the form is, I'm trying to think of a kind word to use, something that I would approve for my friend to say about herself, you know, we should speak kindly to ourselves and about ourselves. Basically, I just would like, I feel like my face looks older and like it's fallen as gravity has done its work. And I feel like the contour, especially underneath my cheeks is really helpful. Also, I really like to add the bronzing um, just to add some color to my face because it is winter. I'm ready to do my eyes. So I'm going in with the Jones Road the best eyeshadow in the shade Smoky Gray. I just wanted a sort of neutral toned eyeshadow that's powdery, that's just gonna give me a wash of color. I've used this nice fluffy domed brush, again from BK Beauty. This is the 202 brush. I'm sure there's a letter in front of it. I'll link it <laughs> down below. Now what I'm doing here is intentionally drawing a round shape above my eye. I'm trying to make I'm trying to give myself doe eyes. I'm trying to make my eye look round and open. To me, that's a youthful look. You could choose to make it more cat eye and sexy. This is just the look that I'm going for. So I'm drawing it on round. Again, just the two sides of my face, I feel like are shaped so differently. My eyes are quite different. I'm trying to make them both look the same or similar enough and I'm using light pressure just to do the windshield wiper motion and draw a semicircle above my crease. Not all the way up to my eyebrow. I'm leaving some space there so that my eyes can look big. I do have pretty big eyes but I've decided to do something I rarely do. I'm using a liquid liner. This is the Well People Liquid Liner in black. I'm sure it has a special name. It's called Fresh Lines with Liquid Liner. And instead of having like a brush on the tip, it's like one plastic piece. And I'm doing it now before I apply any other eyeshadow because I'm not gonna be very good at it. I'm not gonna do it very perfectly and it's okay or I'm hoping the line will get smudged and worn in once I apply things over it. And again, what I'm trying to do is apply it in a sort of round shape. I'm sticking very, very, well, I'm trying to get it actually in my lash, in my lashes as much as possible, but then round it a little bit or make it a little teeny, teeny, tiny bit thicker just in the center of my eye to create some roundness. I don't wanna make it thick enough that you can tell it's thicker. Looking at me from 
across the table because that will close my eye in. Instead, I'm just doing it from the outer edge to about three quarters in to my inner eye. I don't wanna take it all the way into the inner corner because that again will close off the eye. I want to my eyes to look bright and open and so that is how I've tried my best to apply the eyeliner. <laughs> then I'm going in with my fingers to try to smudge it a little bit. I maybe should have used a brush, like an eyeliner brush, probably would have done much better. Those really thin brushes, that probably would have been a better idea, but you know, it didn't really mess anything up. This isn't a perfect look. I'm going for something easy and comfortable and just something that makes me feel a little bit youthful and pretty, lots of shine and big doe eyes. And yeah, I didn't do a wing. I didn't do anything fancy, so it's okay. Next, I'm going in with a cream eyeshadow from Keir Weiss. I will have to put the name of the color on the screen because this is a refillable package and the shade isn't on it, but it's similar in tone or similar in color in my opinion to the Bobbi Brown eyeshadow that I used. It is a smoky, purpley taupe. Well, whereas the other uh, Bobbi Brown was more of a grayish purple, but anyway, I'm using a cream because this is a drier formula, but it's still, has a little bit of sheen to it. It's not completely matte. So I would go with a satin finish if you're gonna use a powder. I would not use anything too shimmery here on the outer half of my eye is where I'm putting it. Because again, I want the color, I want my eyes to look big and open. And so I'm putting a deeper color on the outer half of my eyes, leaving the center and, and uh, inner corner light and bright and open so that makes my eyes look more awake and open again i use my fingers for that product if you're using a powder i would just apply a thin layer of something we're not going to go too dark or smoky i just feel like as we age that can look you have to be careful how you do a smoky eye or in my opinion i'm if, if that's what you are comfortable with please do but for me I just wanted to go with a lighter, smokier eye, just some color, some dimension. But again, I just wanna look and feel youthful and shiny and bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. That's why the next thing I am adding is a brightener, something that has a more satin finish. It's not completely metallic. Um, I recently did a Beauty Pie video, so I happen to have a bunch of Beauty Pie products here but it certainly doesn't need to be this product. This is a Beauty Pie Eye Crayon. I don't know what. Beige Bombshell is the shade, and I don't know what the actual product is, but it's just super easy. I just draw it onto my, not completely into the inner corner, but inner third of the eye. I also put it under my eyebrows just to add a little sheen and lightness up there, and then tap it in. Again, I just want it to be subtle. I could have used a matte white eyeshadow or bone colored eyeshadow, just something to brighten up, make sure that the color that I put on the outer half doesn't creep too far in and deepen the inner corner. This is just a brightener. Now I'm going in with a little more concealer to touch up the edges where I feel like the darker eyeshadow got a little out of hand because again, I'm going for a lifted look and so I'm drawing the concealer on at an angle up towards my temples and I'm just tapping that in with my concealer brush, trying not to spread it. You know, I don't wanna spread it too far out. I just wanna clean up those lines and make my eyes look really lifted. Now it's time for blush. I'm using another Westman Atelier color. This is the Baby Cheeks in Petal. I could have chosen one of a million blushes. I typically double blush, but just because I have these products, uh, I went right in, put it on my cheek. Now the key here is to keep it above the bottom of your nostrils because as we get older, our faces are falling, our cheeks are falling. So in order to keep a lifted look, try to keep the blush higher on your face where you're, than where you used to. I put a teeny bit around my nose, around the tip of my nose, not the very, very tip, 
but just to add some color maybe so it looks like I got a little bit of sun and then I tap my finger in and apply the slightest bit also across my forehead because I don't want it to look like two rosy spots that I've painted on my cheek. I want it to look like one cohesive look. Later I will go in with another blush, a powder blush. Typically blush fades quickly on my face so that's why I'm doing that. Now I'm going in with another bronzer. It's the Han or Han, I believe is how you say it. All natural bronzer in the shade Malibu. It's just a powder bronzer and I'm using just an old Chanel blush brush that I have. So I'm tapping it in, getting a decent amount on the brush and then patting the brush on the back of my hand to make sure that the bronzer is really in there, that the powder is in the brush nicely so it's not gonna stick to any one spot. And then I'm putting it over some of the spots where I had previously put the bronzer contour that I used. I'm making sure to only brush upwards, just like when I tapped everything in, I only tapped upwards. You don't wanna drag anything down on your face. You don't want anything pulling down. So I'm doing the same on the other side, making sure I'm lifting up, pulling it towards my hairline again to create a cohesive look. I don't want any stripes. I don't want anything to look unnatural or cakey. And also using a powder product on top of all of these other cream products will help set it in place. Now I'm going in with a blush. I chose this Jones Road blush, which is called the Best Blush and I have the shade Pop. I chose this because I really like how bright it is. It's a nice bright pink. It's a cool toned pink and that for me is a shade that I feel like really works on my face and I'm putting it more towards the back of my cheeks again to lift and then I put what's left on the brush on the apple of my cheek. So I start in the back and then I brush a little bit there. Here I'm using a Jenny Patankin blush brush and then I just put the rest you know a little on my chin a little on my forehead a little on my nose I didn't redip I just used what was left on my brush again to create a cohesive look I don't want anything to be splotchy then I again chose a beauty pie lip gloss because I just did the beauty pie video this happens to be one of my favorite lip glosses though this is the shade Plum Naked. It's very comfortable, it has a nice sheen, it's pretty natural looking on me, and I feel like that's the kind of lip I would wear with this look, because I feel like, especially if this is daytime, I don't wanna to be too overdone in the lips when I've already done my eyes so much. And then I realized I forgot to finish my eyes, so I'm going in with a white eyeliner. This is, or, or a bone color, natural color, nude, Eyeliner, this is the Cure Weiss. This does not last especially long. I recommend the Victoria Beckham eye brightening pencil instead of the Cure Weiss, but that's what I have on hand. And so I'm just applying that on the lower waterline to brighten my eyes. Again, I'm going for that doe-eyed, wide open, alert, awake look. And that's what the white or you know, beige eyeliner does. And then I'm going in with a mascara here. I'm using the Ilia Limitless Lash Mascara. This does have one of those wands that is different on both sides. One side is like fluffier and the other side's more like a comb. This is a great mascara and it's not gonna flake or smudge and that's why I'm gonna use it but I really don't like these double-sided mascaras because then I have to think about which side I'm using. In this case, I'm using the fluffier side first. I don't know if that's right. I should have gone in and used my eyelash curler, but I can't find that at the moment. So I'm going in and I'm really starting at the base of the lash and wiggling it all the way through and then I'm flipping it over, going to the comb side and doing the same thing to really coat the entire lash. Start at the base of the lash so that the lashes appear thicker and then comb all the way through to add that length and maybe volume to the lash. This mascara happens to be more lengthening. I do not put mascara on my lower lashes because it 
always smudges on me but there's a big difference between before mascara and after and so you see why I'm a fan of this mascara actually I just saw there's a new product like dry shampoo but for mascara or for eyes comment below if you know what I'm talking about but this is an excellent mascara looks beautiful I think it does a great job and it it doesn't flake or smudge and that for me is key and that is the finished look for my daytime's Valentine's Day, like if I'm going to lunch, brunch, meeting some girlfriends out, I just, I think it's beautiful. I'm clearly made up, I've clearly made an effort. I think I, you know, my skin looks nice, but not too perfected. My eyes look nice, they have a nice sheen and glow. But at the same time, I don't think I look like overdone, like, whoa, where does she think she's going, you know? So that is the look, and then I'm going to add a few more things to show you how I would take it from day to night, starting with adding a little glam to the eyes. Now, I do love this product. This is the Victoria Beckham Lid Lusters. I have this shade Chiffon. It is like a pressed glittery product, but they're not separate glitter particles like I know some products can be, so I'm just showing you um, what it is. I put it in the very center of my lid, up to, almost up to the crease, because if the light is gonna hit and you're gonna have a sheen, that's where you would be lit up. And it does brighten the eye. I do feel like it adds a little something. You know, if you're at a candlelit dinner and you look down or close your eyes, it's just gonna add a little more sheen sparkle. I, I think it's pretty, it's a little sexy, and it's fun. So I just tap that in. I don't wanna to go too crazy again because I still wanna look classy and pulled together, not like I've gone crazy and I'm going to a rave. <laughs> now for highlight, I could have chosen many. I decided to go for one that is gonna amp it up, and this one I do recommend. This is the Beauty Pie Triple Beauty Luminizing Wand, and it's very much, I think, like the Charlotte Tilbury. It's very much, from what I understand, like one of those very popular luminizing wands. This one, I mean, you see the difference it makes. I'm putting it on the very top of my cheekbones and I'm tapping it in. I want to disperse it a little bit and make sure there are no harsh edges. I do not want it to look like a stripe. And then once I have tapped it all in where I want it to go back up towards the edge of my eye, I will then go in and tap it into onto the, my cheek a little bit. I do the same on the other side and then I put a teeny, teeny bit on the tip of my nose. I use a clean finger to pat that in because I don't want to look like Rudolph but with a shiny nose that, well, my nose will be red, but you know what I'm saying. And then I put a little bit above the arch of the eyebrows. That's another place that the light would hit naturally as well as it makes the face look less stripey. And then I put whatever's left on my finger on the very bottom of my chin, and then again, I'm powdering just under my lip because I don't wanna look like I'm drooling or greasy on my chin. And I'm also touching up under my eyes again. But that bit of luminizer or a highlighter, I just think, think it's exquisite. It really makes me happy. It's that finishing touch that I absolutely love. Now I could have put that in my inner corners, which I kind of wish I did, but that's about it. You know, you want it around the face so it doesn't look like it's in one spot, but at the same time, you don't want to go crazy. And just make sure, again, that there are no lines. Just blend the edges of it. Now I'm gonna also amp up the lips, so I'm using a lip liner. Again, this happens to be a Beauty Pie product. I don't see the shade, I will put it on the screen. And what I'm doing, if you can even tell, is I'm just lining, well, I'm leaving the center of my lips blank. That noise you hear is my dog aggressively trying to get me to pet him, I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm lining my lips, but I'm leaving the center blank because then the center of my lips will be lighter in color, which will make them look more full. The edges will be deeper and darker, and the center will look more lit up like they're plump and catching the light. But la, the piece de resistance, I'm taking a teeny bit of highlighter 
And even if you use a powder highlighter, this will work as well, especially if it's a clean brand, typically then that's okay to put on your lips, but I'm dotting it just in the center of my lower lip. Again, that will make the lips look fuller, more voluminous, voluminous, uh, because of the way the light's hitting it. Then I go in and I spray a finishing spray or a setting spray. You know, sometimes I just use a facial mist for this. This is just a product that will sort of get everything on your face to congeal together and stay put longer. This happens to be the Milk Makeup Setting Spray, the Hydra Grip Set and Refresh Spray. I actually really like this one. It doesn't have a scent. It just smells like water, if that's a thing. <laughs> and I really appreciate that about it. I do think it helps my makeup stay longer, but that could be all in my head. Let me know if you find setting sprays to make a difference and if there's one you'd recommend. Anyway, that is it. That's the final look. I hope that seeing me apply this helps you some. Maybe it gives you some tips or tricks or inspires you in some way. You know, I, it, I did say it's for Valentine's Day. Of course, it's for any day. I wear makeup every day. It really improves my mood. I've been sick. I've been sick for like a month. No, two months. And just putting makeup on really helps me feel a lot better. Like I said, I've had this on for several hours now, like now at like five or six hours. And so yes, my eyebrows have fallen some, but they haven't smudged. I think they still look really good. The makeup maybe has faded a little bit, the cream eyeshadow, that does happen. It also creased some, which also happens, but I mean, I have a pretty big wrinkle there in my eyelid. So that's not a complete surprise. Um, the lip that I have on now, I use the Tower 28 Lip Liner. It's their multi-liner. This is a work of art, so it's a little more brown, well, a lot more brown than what I had on earlier for a more neutral look. But then I went on top of it with the Lawless Forget the Filler, and this is like baby pink or something. I can't read that, but it definitely has a pink tint to it. For me, I just prefer lip glosses. I find them comfortable. I like the sheen. You could always do a matte lip. I do have quite a bit of shine on my face elsewhere, so I don't need the sheen, but I love anything sparkly. Like I said, I hope this gives you some inspiration. Everything will be linked down below. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you like my kind of content. And let me know what your plans are for Valentine's Day. I don't even have any. Oh, I do actually. I'm getting my hair colored, my roots. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy everything. Happy week. And as always, I hope you find some time to pamper yourself today. Bye.